Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode. This is Take It to the Hizzy Fantasy Football, T-I-T-T-H, number 15, number 1-5. I'm your host, Justin Bruni. Today, we're going over our Week 6 preview, who are starting at the quarterback, wide receiver, running back, and tight end positions, uh, who are flexing out, who are benching. Uh, we have a very early game, uh, uh, Sunday morning, 9.30 a.m. Eastern, 8.30 Central Time. Uh, yay, England games. Uh, we got the uh, Panthers and the Bucks. Uh, playing playing at uh, Tottingham uh, in England, another uh, uh, pageantry game, you know, if you will, uh, for the NFL. Uh, so look to get your uh, players for this game in early uh, or the night before. Uh, you know, following up uh, early in the morning with any uh, you know guys that are questionable going into this game. Uh, no one really comes to mind. I uh, think all the the Bucks are healthy. Godwin's good to go. Um, kind of jumping into things here, looking at the Panthers, uh, looking at Kyle Allen. I think you can uh, start them in super flex leagues for sure in uh, standalone quarterback leagues. Uh, haven't been trusting him as much after the past uh, few weeks. He had a really good performance against Arizona a couple of uh, a weeks now. He's you know kind of come down from that you know four touchdown performance. Uh, you know put the ball on the ground uh, three times a couple weeks ago. Only had one interception last week. No interceptions, but would have liked to have seen uh, a couple of plays uh, finished in the red zone on a couple of, uh, of his pass attempts uh, down there. Uh, Buccaneers allowing 320 yards uh, per game uh, uh, in the air. Uh, nine touchdowns allowed, five interceptions for their uh, defense. So I like some uh, some upside for Kyle Allen this week. Not as confident as I was uh, in him in previous weeks. Uh, Buccaneers defense has still been uh, kind of sneaky up front. They they will bring a lot of pressure on them. So I look for them to uh, you know again do a lot of passing to Christian McCaffrey. Uh, the Bucks uh, defense did. Uh, halt Christian McCaffrey in week two. I don't think that'll happen again, uh, but I do think that they get Christian McCaffrey rolling early on uh, with some pass catching out of the backfield. So, of course, you're obviously, obviously starting him. He was limited this week. You know, he was just uh, uh, going through some cramp, uh, cramps after last week. Uh, so, uh, got, got some rest this week. Not sure if you're going to see him, you know, touch the ball 30 times this week, but still look for him to get a, a, a healthy uh, workhorse volume. Uh, so, you're always firing him up. DJ Moore, Curtis Samuel, Greg Olson, Jarius Wright, uh, starting all these guys uh, except Jarius Wright. Uh, so DJ Moore, Curtis Samuel, Greg Olson, fire those guys up. Uh, obviously, they're playing a ton. Greg Olson should have a better week this week. Had a much better performance uh, in week two up against the uh, uh, Buccaneers. Cam Newton you know, was playing quarterback, obviously, but all these guys were able to uh, get open against the Buccaneers. Uh, last time they played, D, uh, Samuel and DJ combined for like 27 targets just between the two of them. So there's going to be some upside against this defense still. Uh, going over to the Buccaneers, uh, you have Winston. Should be a little bit more comfortable playing at home. Still going to be benching him, though. Uh, going to throw an interception or, throw an interception or two uh, up against this defense, not trusting him this week. Uh, as far as the, the running backs, you can flex out, you know, uh, Ronald Jones and Peyton Barber, I think. I think they're pretty safe play still. I think they'll have a, a pretty good value up against this Panthers uh, defense, uh, allowing 10th most rush yards uh, against the run, 135 yards a game on the ground uh, uh, on, on average. So there's some upside there, you know, that, that's available for them. I prefer Barber a little bit more than Rojo this week just because uh, Barber did have a a solid performance against uh, the Panthers in week two, and they were able to use him as uh, you know really ground and pound type of running back. Gave him like 23 carries. I think he only only, only had like uh, 80 something yards, but uh, he was able to uh, eat some clock and, and get a lot of carries. So uh, I could see his workload being a little bit larger this week. And still fire up these wide receivers. Give me Evans. Give me Godwin. Give me Howard. Uh, I think that they're going to balance things out. The coaching staff has said as much. You know, Godwin obviously is a must start every week. You know, if you have some depth, I could understand why you would bench Mike Evans. The uh, Panthers secondary has still been, you know, pretty good for a lot of this year. But I think that all these guys can get involved uh, uh, this week. I think that, you know, Jameis can still probably score, you know, one to two touchdowns. I just think that he's going to throw, you know, maybe two or three picks even. I mean, he's just really undisciplined. You know, the Panthers defense has uh, still been good up against the quarterback this, uh, this year. Uh, uh, last week didn't look so great up against Gardner Minshew. 
you know, let up like 375 passing yards. Uh, but at the same time, they've been pretty consistent up against the quarterback. So do see some upside for these these receivers and uh, uh, position players for the Buccaneers. Uh, Rojo, Peyton, uh, Peyton Barber, like I said, for close flex plays for those guys. You know, just if they're in the mix of, of what you have available, I think you can fire up one of them. I like uh, Barber more. And then uh, Evans, Godwin Howard, and I think you can start all these guys. I think that in a limited week uh, with tight ends available, I think Howard uh, could uh, provide you some value this week. Uh, over under in this game, 47 and a half points. Uh, give me the over here. I think the Panthers win on the road, 28-24. Uh, uh, Bengals at the Ravens. You got Andy Dalton here. I think you can start him. Uh, Ravens are allowing 280 yards, uh, 280 yards per game in the air. Uh, Bengals are uh, still hunting, you know, for their first win. I think Andy Dalton could get a little bit aggressive in this game. Uh, Zach Taylor, you know, uh, hushing out the rumors about trading AJ Green. That could be a little bit frustrating. So interesting to see how they come out. If they're going to come out and play more aggressive or try to ground and pound uh, uh, the clock here with uh, Joe Mixon. The Ravens are allowing uh, uh, 90 yards per game on the ground, so not as much value there. But I think that they'll pass the ball to him a little bit more this week. I think they really have to get him going. I think he can get 18 carries, like 95 yards and a touchdown, uh, maybe even like 30 to 50 yards in the passing game. I think he does find pay dirt this week, so fire up Joe Mixon as well. Uh, as far as the receivers here, Tyler Boyd, Auden Tate, uh, Eifert, uh, those guys you can start, you know, Eifert's more of like a really deeper tight end play, but again, tight end position a little bit limited this week with people on buys. Uh, you have Eric's in there with uh, Uzama not starting them. Uh, uh, Boyd and Tate like them a lot. AJ Green's still out. Uh, Auden Tate's going to be a, a good threat in the red zone. He had two targets last week, dropped one of those for a, t uh, dropped one of those and caught another one for a touchdown. Uh, so I do see some value still for him there. Ravens are allowing the fifth most yards per catch, uh, 8.2 8 yards per catch, 280 yards per game, like I mentioned before, in the air. So I like Boyd and Tate a lot. Boyd's still averaging like 10 targets per game, so there's some value for him there. And Eifert, you know, just in the middle of the road tight end option, really, you know, middle of the road, touchdown dependent tight end option uh, if you're trying to stream a uh, tight end this week. Uh, next up is the Ravens. You got Lamar Jackson. Obviously, you're going to be starting him. Uh, providing really good value right now, especially up against this week with the Bengals allowing so much uh, rack on the uh, on the ground. Uh, Bengals, you know, they're going to be trying to push the tempo on, on Lamar, trying to bring pressure on him, but they're allowing 167 yards per week on the ground. So it's going to be going to be a tough uh, balance there between attacking him uh, outside the pocket. You know, when he's going to have that type of opportunity, they're allowing 250 yards in the air. So Lamar, you know, has a lot of upside this week. Uh, you're, you're absolutely starting him. You know, the offense in general, um, you know, just been rolling. You know, e even when they're down in games, they're still they're still pushing the tempo, still chasing points. So that, that's good to see. Mark Ingram in line for a big week. Uh, you're absolutely starting him, not starting the guys behind him in Gus Edwards or Justice Hill. Uh, Bengals are allowing the most yards on the ground, uh, tied for the league, lead league uh, for most uh, touchdowns allowed. Uh, at seven, Bengals allowing most first downs uh, against the run. You know, a, a lot of reasons to start uh, Mark Ingram and Lamar Jackson, you know, just based on their running upside. Uh, wide receivers, uh, tight end, uh, Marquise Brown, you're going to flex him out as long as he's good to go. Uh, he was banged up this week. Uh, going to be a game time decision. If he is not starting, I think you could actually start Miles Boykin this week. I think uh, he'll have some value. Lamar Jackson has shown some preference to him. Um, you know, him and even Hayden Hurst, you know, both of those guys, limited volume, have been able to do some damage. So I like those guys as some uh, sneaky plays this week. If Marquise Brown is out, keep them out of your lineup if Marquise Brown is playing. Uh, Mark Andrews is going to start him. He was questionable this week uh, with a back injury, uh, but he's back uh, at practice, so he's good to go. Willie Sneed, I think you can flex out in this game. Marquise Brown just a little bit banged up, may be limited even if he is good to go. Uh, Seth Roberts keeping on the bench, not interested. Uh, Bengals have allowed eight touchdowns in five games. You like that upside for Andrews and Brown. Uh, if if, uh, if Brown is playing, Andrews uh, you know, should have a pretty good, a pretty big game if Brown is out. Uh, and like I said, fire up Boykins if, if Brown is out. Uh, Bengals secondary, again, not spectacular. Plenty of upside against, with all these pass catchers, really. I just don't like any of the back end guys to get any uh, real volume, but they could uh, come in and steal a touchdown, you know, really at any point uh, up against the secondary. Over under 48, uh, I like the over here. Uh, I'm going to be liking a lot of overs this week. I like the matchups this week, a lot of scoring friendly weeks. Uh, but Ravens uh, take this one 31-21. 
All right, next up, we got the Texans at the Chiefs, uh, starting pretty much everybody you can in this matchup, I think. Uh, Watson, you're starting him. Chiefs are allowing 240 yards uh, in the air per week. Uh, Chiefs defense, uh, seven touchdowns allowed, only four interceptions. Obviously, Fuller's coming off that big game. Watson's coming off a big game. <clears throat> they have uh, some chemistry going there. You know, they're they're, uh, they're they're rolling. They're feeling good. Fifty-two points and you know, uh, victory. Uh, that feels nice. Uh, so, looking for them to you know, kind of pick up where they left off as far as the scoring is concerned. Uh, should be excited about starting Watson this week. Uh, with the running backs, Carlos Hyde, Duke Johnson. I think you can feel comfortable starting both of them this week. Carlos Hyde used in the role to uh, really uh, uh, grind out the clock, like we saw from uh, Mac last week up against uh, the Chiefs. Duke Johnson going to be needed in the pass catching game out of the backfield. Uh, you know, need a chunk play here or there, uh, change of pace. I look, I, I like him to score a touchdown this week. I think he, he could find Pater this week. So I'm firing up both of them. And then the receivers, I mean, as much as he can, really. Uh, Hopkins, Fuller, I think he can start Pute this week in a flex uh, capacity. You know, if, if you need a, a deeper guy or you have, you know, dual flex spots and you're uh, on buys, got injuries, et cetera, you know, you're, you're looking for that guy and you already have him, I, I think you can fire him up. The tight ends, super deep plays could go either way between Fells and Atkins. Not really sure I want to uh, take the risk between either one. Honestly, either one can get like two catches and two touchdowns. It's crazy. Uh, but in this offense, that's just the way it is. You know, if, you, if you're open and you're that close to the end zone, the opportunity could be really easy for those guys. Uh, but not confident enough for, uh, to, to roll the dice on something like that. Um, it would be super frustrating if it happens, but uh, not going to be doing that and keeping them out of lineups. Uh, give me Kute, though, behind Hopkins and Fuller, uh, uh, starting both of them up for sure. Uh, Stills is a game-time decision, but I think you can keep him on your bench regardless. Uh, just been banged up, uh, been in and out of practices, uh, not really getting in. I don't remember the last time he got a full practice, and actually he's, he's been limited uh, for a couple of weeks now. So uh, wouldn't be excited to get him in the lineup even, even if he was good to go. Uh, fire up these other guys here. I think you can be pretty happy with uh, the, the production they're going to get you this week. <clears throat> uh, next up, we have the Chiefs, Mahomes. Obviously, we're starting him. Uh, we're not worthy. Uh, Mahomes playing on that bad ankle last week, uh, still getting it done. Uh, was limited somewhat this week, but he's going to be fine. Um, you know, uh, that much time for a, a small injury like that uh, in the NFL, you know, not really concerning for me. Uh, Mahomes, I'm thinking, easily hits this week over 300 yards, three passing touchdowns. I think you got to fire up the, the running backs as well. Damian Williams, LaShawn McCoy, uh, start both of them with some confidence. I think McCoy will get, uh, you know, the work, you know, in between the tackles, you know, getting some rushing value. Texans are allowing about 100 yards on the ground uh, per week. So, you know, kind of middle of the field, uh, you know, rushing defense as far as the Texans are concerned. But I like Dean Williams a little bit more because I think he's going to get a solid workload in the pass catching game. Not really sure what's going on with these receivers here. Sammy Watkins looks like he's going to be out. Uh, Tyree Kill, not sure if he's back. Even if he's going to be back, he might have a, a limited workload or be used in a limited, limited capacity. We're not really sure just yet. Uh, so if both of those guys are out, I really like Dane, Dane Williams' value this week. Uh, Demarcus Robinson, uh, like him this week. He, I think he's a must-start no matter what. Uh, Pringle, I think, is a flex or bench play, You know, kind of pending what goes down with Watkins and Hill. Like I said, it looks like Watkins is out. Hill is, is still in play. If both of them are out, though, I think you definitely need to get Pringle in a lineup. Uh, and then Kelsey, obviously, is a must-start. You know, He's going to be the biggest benefactor of any of these receivers being out this week. And we just are assuming that this is going to be a shootout regardless, that you know, even if the Chiefs aren't scoring points, that the Texans are, and that the Chiefs will chase points. So it should be a really good matchup this week. You know, really have to kind of follow the, the health of these receivers uh, going into Sunday. Watkins and Hill, you know, that is going to, um, you know, predicate some of the game flow here, you know, if they're, if they're in the game. You know, uh, I don't think I touched on the backup uh, running backs, Darrell Williams, Darwin, keeping them on the bench. Uh, Darrell Williams could actually have a role or at least be used somewhat if both of those wide receivers are out, uh, but not enough volume to be fantasy relevant this week. So I'm going to keep him out, but he may steal a touch for that damn touchdown that one of us want. Um, you know, out of a Rob <clears throat> out of a Robinson or a McCoy or uh, even even Kelsey. So we'll see what happens there. But absolutely firing up Kelsey. You know, Pringle if some of these guys are out, Hill and Watkins. I think if Hill is in, I think I still might keep Pringle out. 
Robinson we're starting for sure. Um, and I'm not sure if you want to start Watkins either way. Even if he goes into this game, he might just get used as a decoy. Uh, and that very, that could very well be necessary, you know, in this high scoring game where you need to uh, draw some cover coverage off of uh, some of these other guys like uh, maybe Hill and Robinson, Kelsey. So over under in this game is 55 points. I'm going to take the over. Give me the Chiefs 34 uh, 28. Next up, we have the Saints at the Jags. Uh, looking forward to this game. Um, also taking the over in this game. Uh, a lot of people are uh, pushing to the under now that Jalen Ramsey's coming back, but I, I still think it's going to be a, a good high scoring game. Uh, so looking at the Saints, uh, Teddy Bridgewater, Taysom Hill, he fills out the position. So we got to talk about him because <laughs> the, the guy uh, fills out like every stat. So starting Ted, Teddy Bridgewater and in super flex, if you absolutely have to, I guess you can start Hill. Uh, if you're like in a super deep league, I'm in a 14 team uh, super flex uh, league, and that's that's just crazy the amount of limited players that are available at the quarterback position. So if you need a, a quarterback that's you know potentially just playing as a position player, catching passes, rushing the ball, throwing the ball, you know, getting tackles if that's recorded, <laughs> you know, and uh, he's due for a touchdown. Taysom Hill he hasn't got one since week one, so uh, he's been working hard both sides of the ball, special teams. Uh, I think they might draw something up for him this week uh, in, in, a, in a game where they might be looking for uh, something creative in close up against a Jags defense that, you know, might be getting uh, a little bit more tricky with Jalen Ramsey back. Uh, so, yeah, I like Teddy Bridgewater this week, and I like uh, Taysom Hill as well if in, a, in a certain spot, uh, not necessarily in a standalone uh, one quarterback league. Am I saying to go rush to put him in your lineup? But, hey, in a, in a, in a few leagues, I could see where he might hold some value for you. Uh, so Ramsey uh, looks like he's going to be back this week. I'm uncertain at what capacity he's going to be used for the Jaguars defense. Regardless, the Jaguars are allowing uh, the seventh most all-purpose yards in the NFL. So I think that there's still plenty of upside here for uh, for Bridgewater and the Saints offense, uh, especially with Kamara there. I'm not I'm gonna I'm not going to start Latin Murray this week, but I am of course you know starting Alvin Kamara. It's Alvin Kamara, come on now. Jags allowing 135 yards per game on the ground. Plenty of upside for Kamara in the passing game and the rushing game. Starting Mike Thomas, I think he can flex out uh, Ted Ginn and Jared Cook this week as well. I think that Mike Thomas could get tied up with Jalen Ramsey, Jalen Ramsey uh, early on. Mike Thomas makes a couple of big plays on him, and oh, oh my back, oh it's flaring up. I got take me out, coach. Oh, oh my, oh. I don't know how it's going to go down, but I, I'm not really expecting Jalen Ramsey to play the full game. We'll we'll see what happens. <clears throat> Ownership says they had a heart to heart with him. You know, Jalen Ramsey's not really singing the same tune. He's talking about, you know, I know my body and, you know, I'm going to do what's best for it, you know, no matter what. So I'm interested to see what happens, but I'm not betting on, on ownership getting necessarily you know, what they expect, what they're getting. So not necessarily sure what's going to happen there. I'm confident in starting all these guys, Mike Thomas, Ted Ginn, Jared Cook. I think Jared Cook is, is, is in play this week. He's gotten uh, more of a workload the past few weeks. Uh, six targets the past couple of weeks, four to six catches, and a touchdown. I think he uh, could go either way for him or Ted Ginn this week. And then Mike Thomas is going to just get con some consistent volume, uh, same that he's been getting. Look for him to get like 10 to 12 targets this week. Should have a, a pretty good workload. Uh, Jaguars uh, starting out Minshew for sure. Saints are allowing the fifth most points to the quarterback position uh, in fantasy, so you have to like that. Uh, Saints have been uh, good against the run, so I do think that'll push Minshew to be uh, more active in the passing game this week. Uh, eight touchdowns allowed, two interceptions for this uh, Jaguars or Jaguars Saints defense. Uh, so give me 340 passing yards, three passing touchdowns for Minshew this week. I think that he's going to be asked to do a little bit more uh, with the the run game clogging up the middle uh, just a little bit. Uh, Fournette still starting him, Armstead keeping him on the bench. I think that Fournette will get a little bit more involved in the passing game this week. I think he can get like somewhere in between uh, 40 to 60 yards receiving because I think there is going to be a little bit more difficulty for him rushing up the middle. He is a grind and out uh, power runner up the middle. The Saints are still allowing four and a half yards per carry. So I still see some value there, but I think that they're going to prioritize taking Fournette out of the game. And that is pushing him to the outside, you know, making him run to the outside or making him catch balls to the outside. And, you know, even though they've you know been passing to him, you know, his pass catching ability is still limited. You know, he can only do so much. They've been using him more uh, in that asset of the game but, or facet of the game. But uh, at the same time, you know, he's not, you know, that's not his role. That's not what he is. He's still a power runner up the middle. I still think he can get 100, uh, 100 110, 108 all-purpose yards. 
you know, you know, mixed in with that 46 to maybe 60 receiving yards and maybe 40 or 50 yards up the middle, because I do think they're going to prioritize uh, to take him out of the game plan this week and really force Minshew to try and cut them up on the secondary uh, and really bet on, you know, their guys back there, you know, playing strong against him. Don't think it's going to happen because I'm firing up DJ Shark. I'm firing up D.D. Westbrook for sure. Uh, Jeff Swain, I think you can fire him up this week. You know, the beginning of the week, I was <clears throat> feeling just like, eh, it's kind of like an iffy play. I think he's like an okay play this week. But now Josh Oliver's out. You have O'Shaughnessy out for the whole year. Jeff Swain is going to be an every down tight end in this game this week. I think you can absolutely start him. I, I don't see why not. You got limited options this week at the tight end position with all these buys. I think, you, I think you can start him. Minshew's been targeting uh, the tight end position in the red zone. O'Shaughnessy's come down with some touchdowns. Swain's been getting targeted down there still. So I like him as, as a deep start this week uh, if, you can, uh, if you can grab him. Uh, or maybe just in DFS, you know, if you want to uh, you know, throw, uh, uh, throw a dollar on him, one dollar $1 hollow. Uh, DJ Shark, uh, D.D. Westbrook, got to start him, right? DJ Shark playing wide receiver five on the year in fantasy. D.D. Westbrook just has a really consistent role in this offense. So... Uh, excited to see what both of them can bring this week. Uh, I'm thinking really anywhere from like six to 10 catches for either of them, you know, near a hundred yards for either of them. But I think both of them can have uh, both pretty good weeks. Uh, I'm not really sure uh, on how the stat line is going to fall. They're using both of them in, in the slot interchange interchangingly. Uh, so I'm not really sure who's going to get the, the most of that, most of it this week, but I do feel confident in starting both of them uh, over under in this game is 43 and a half. Uh, give me the Jags at home, 31-26, hitting the over. A lot of overs this week, guys. A lot of scoring. Like the matchups this week. Uh, next up, we have the Eagles at, at the Vikings. Uh, starting Carson Wentz, I think it's kind of a riskier start, but I think you can uh, plug him into your lineup. You might be limited at quarterback. Uh, you know, If you only have one quarterback or two quarterbacks and you got somebody on a bye, I think you can still start him this week, but I do think he's a riskier start up against this defense. You know, I, I could still see him coming out and throwing you know, an interception. Hopefully not two, but I could still see him coming out with throwing interception. He's only thrown two on the year, Carson Wentz. So, you know, I don't like him to come out and, uh, you know, blow up uh, in, in Minnesota. Uh, but I do think that, uh, you know, Vikings defense, they're, they're a top 10, top 10 defense against the rush and the pass. So, you know, kind of got to give respect where, where, it's, uh, where it's due. Uh, I think Wentz could be in line for a long day. <clears throat> uh, because of that, I'm going to bench uh, Jordan Howard. Uh, I think that he's not going to have as much value this week. Eagles are only allowing 3.2 yards per carry, one, one of the lowest in the league. Uh, so Howard, you know, grinding it out, power up the middle type of runner, not really getting it done for me this week. I like Miles Sanders a little bit more. I think he can flex him out because I think he's going to get a little bit more value uh, catching the ball out of the backfield. Jordan Howard's been the hot guy, even got a touchdown uh, in his last game up against the Jets, but you know, still not uh, going to get it done this week in my opinion. Going to bench him, fire up Miles Sanders, think he'll get a little bit more work uh, out of the pass catching game. Uh, On to the receivers. You got Alshon Jeffrey, Zach Ertz, Nelson Aguilar. Starting up these guys, I like uh, Alshon and Aguilar in more of a flex uh, spot. You know, the defense here is still, you know, pretty good. Like I mentioned, I, I'm not expect, expecting a ton out of Wentz, and he is still a riskier start. I think that he's going to be doing a lot of check down work to, to Ertz, but I'm not sure if him and Ertz find the end zone this week. You know, there was another week that Ertz had like 16 targets, eight catches, but no touchdown. It's, could be something similar uh, this week. I'm not really sure. The Vikings defense has just been really good. I'm not really sure what to expect out of this game. Uh, I like for the Eagles to have to, to pass a lot, you know, given that I think that the Vikings are going to be uh, ahead in this game. So that's what lends me a little bit more upside for Aguilar. Uh, I think that he could get involved this week, but it's really just been the Alshon Jeffrey show uh, with Zach Ertz. Uh, you know, th those guys have been the pass catcher since Deshaun uh, Jackson went out. So <clears throat> not a ton of confidence in Aguilar, uh, but I think you can plug him into your lineup if you need a deep, uh, a deep play. You know, if you're like in a 14 team, you know, limited in options, um, you know, can't pick, any, uh, uh, can't pick anybody up or anything like that. I think you can uh, get him in the lineup this week. I think he could, uh, he could find Pater, uh, you know, but the volume may not be there. You know, you may only, you know, get that one touchdown, three catches or something like that, but uh, Ertz, I look to uh, be uh, in, uh, included a lot in the game plan, uh, be a volume uh, pass catcher. Alshon Jeffrey, going to be touchdown dependent. think he only gets like four to six catches, but I think he still can get like 75 to 100 yards on those. Uh, Vikings, starting Cousins, should be a lot of value for him this week. Uh, Eagles are allowing the fourth most passing yards. So I think that that's going to push the, the tempo of the game, the passing game for the Vikings. 
um, because the uh, Eagles are also very good up against the rush. Uh, but their uh, passing defense is allowing uh, nine touchdowns, uh, does have six interceptions. So look out Kirk Cousins interceptions. You know, it could be one of those this week, but I could still see Kirk Cousins maybe throwing two touchdowns, three touchdowns. Dalvin Cook, he's a must start still. Uh, have to keep rolling him into your lineups. I do think that he could receive a t- uh, uh, receive a touchdown this week, uh, pass catching touchdown. So I'm still firing him up, like both of those guys and, and Cousins and Cook. And then with the receivers, you know, still rolling with Thielen and Diggs. <clears throat> I think he can roll out a la BC Johnson. I think he could get involved this week. There's just a lot of opportunity up against the the pass catching defense for uh, the Eagles, uh, just allowing a ton of yards so far this year. Not starting uh, Rudolph, not starting Irv Smith or Treadwell, despite any of them coming in and having the opportunity to, to steal a touchdown, which I think they could. Even Nola Bisi, I mean, technically that dude's stealing a touchdown from us, you know, from Diggs or Thielen, because um, you know, everyone wants Diggs to get right and get back into the end zone. My goodness, or get traded, something, anything, really. Give us something. Give us some trade value. Give us something to start every week. Come on, Diggs. Help us out, brother. Something. Ola B.C. Johnson, I'll just want to yell his name at the TV. So if he scores a touchdown, I'm good with it. <laughs> uh, in this game, I like the over still. Uh, 44 is the over. 28-21, I like the Vikings at home. I think it's still kind of a lower uh, total uh, for the opportunity that the Vikings have in the pass catching game or in the passing game. Sorry. Uh, so I, I like them this week. Uh, give me the Vikings, 28-21 at home. Okay, next up we have the Seahawks at the Browns. Uh, absolutely starting Russell Wilson this week. Uh, really confident with him. He's got 12 touchdowns on the year, no interceptions. The Browns are allowing the seventh fewest uh, pass yards. You know, not great there, but they have allowed 10 passing touchdowns, only have four interceptions. So still firing up Russell Wilson with confidence. The rushing game is really going to balance things out. Uh, firing up Chris Carson. Uh, him and Rashad Penny were both uh, limited uh, towards the back end of the week, but uh, they both uh, got, got back onto the field on Friday. Uh, Chris Carson's left off of the final injury report. I think Rashad Penny is still t- uh, technically questionable, but I think uh, he'll uh, give it a go. I think him and Procise will split carries behind Carson. Not trying to get either of those guys in my, into my lineup this week, uh, but fire up Chris Carson for sure. Uh, Browns allowing five rushing touchdowns so far through five games, so give me a Chris Carson touchdown this week. Uh, Browns are allowing over five yards per carry. Gave up 240 yards on the ground last week. Even if they get that number right, you know, how, how much more can they improve? You know, 180 yards, 170. So give me uh, Chris Carson this week. Fire him up with confidence. No issues there. 20 carries, 110 yards, maybe even two touchdowns, but definitely one touchdown this week for Chris, uh, Chris Carson. Uh, wide receivers, you have Tyler Lockett, DJ Metcalf. Uh, starting both of them, starting Will Disley, not starting Brown, John Brown or David Moore. Uh, Will Disley, I think, you know, he's going to have the most volume this week or the most opportunity. I think Lockett will be there as well. I think he'll get a good amount, good, good amount of volume and give me a Metcalf touchdown. You know, I think Metcalf uh, could have a touchdown this week, three catches, four, uh, four catches, 40 to 60 yards and a touchdown. I think that he is a, a mismatch up against this secondary. I think that he's going to be able to create some opportunity uh, with his uh, size and speed this week up against this secondary. Um, that has been okay, but I just think that he's going to create some mismatches. Um, you know, some of these guys are just a little bit smaller. Um, even uh, uh, if they use him up against Ward, I think that'd be perfect if they just lined him up, up against Denzel Ward all day. Um, Metcalf would not be a guy to start if that was the case, but it would uh, jump the value for uh, everybody else if they were locking him out um, you know, all day with him. Uh, so don't want to see that <laughs> if you're trying to start him this week. Uh, but I do still think that they'll, they'll move these guys around. You know, that's, that's what they've been doing, uh, using even Metcalf out of the slot, lock it out of the slot. Uh, Will Disley's getting you know consistent value every week, so uh, I like all these guys. Not David Moore, not Jerron Brown. Uh, fire fire them up with confidence. Except for that, just take I just gave you on DK Metcalf, maybe lining up against Denzel Ward all day. I don't think they'll do that. I, I don't think they do. They would, but if I was playing a video game, that's what I would do. <laughs> so I guess that's just where that came from out of my, the back of my head. Uh, the Browns <laughs> starting Baker Mayfield. Uh, I think he's a risky start this week. Hasn't shown us enough. He's mistake oriented. Uh, playing at home, that's the upside for him. You know, the, the Seahawks have uh, not been great up against the pass. Uh, he still could uh, pass for a good amount of yards. You know, the Seahawks have allowed the fifth most in the league so far. So I'm just not really confident with them. You know, right now, uh, they're that team is just all talk right now and no walk. I, give me 250 passing yards, two passing touchdowns, and, and two interceptions. 
I'm not that confident in him. I think the two passing touchdowns may be even too kind, but he has playmakers around him. I think Jarvis Landry could have a big week. Nick Chubb, you're absolutely starting him. Uh, Seahawks have allowed five rushing touchdowns on the season. He's got he has some upside, uh, but they are only allowing like the fifth fewest yards. So could be a slower day for him, but I do think that he still finds Pater just under 100 all-purpose yards, like somewhere in the 90s. You know, 85 to 95 all-purpose yards for Nick Chubb this week and a rushing touchdown. Uh, Jarvis, OBJ, starting them. Ricky Seals-Jones, I think, is a risky start. Rashad Higgins, I think you can flex him out this week. They're getting him back into the lineup. Callaway, keep him on the bench. They were trying to get Callaway involved last week, and he just refused to catch the ball per usual. Uh, so plug Higgins into that same spot. I think he'll have a little bit of value this week. I think that uh, Ricky Seals-Jones is a touchdown-dependent tight end kind of a lower end a touchdown dependent tight end. I just think in this offense with these weapons, Chubb, Jarvis, OBJ, getting Higgins back, even Callaway's, you know, still going to be there, but I don't I don't think he's going to get anything done. They still may be looking his way, I'm not sure, but I'm not starting him. I'm not, I'm not betting on him scoring a touchdown this week. Uh, I like some Higgins upside. Fire up OBJ still every week obviously. Still Odell Beckham Jr. Crazy they're talking about trading him. It's nuts. You can't get it done with this guy. Well, how does no one get it done with this guy? Is it him? Is it really him? Maybe it is. I don't know. I don't know. Diva wide receivers this year. I don't know what the deal is. Uh, but I don't understand what's going on there. Talking about taking offers for OBJ in the middle of the season. Come on. Get it together, the Browns. Uh, over under in this game, 46 and a half points. Uh, going with a Seattle win on the road, taking the under 24-21. Okay, next up we have Redskins at the Dolphins. Case Keenum, I think you can start in a super flex league, not starting him in a, a standalone quarterback league. I'd you know, bench him there for sure. Could get a couple of touchdowns this week. Obviously, the opportunities there up against the, the Dolphins defense. So super flex, yeah, you can start him. Standalone quarterback league, still not going to start him. Um, with the running backs, I feel a little bit more confident. Adrian Peterson, you can flex out. Chris Thompson, you can, Thompson, you can absolutely start. I think that Thompson uh, for sure finds the end zone this week. And I think Adrian Peterson... You know, is touchdown dependent, uh, fantasy uh, relevant this week, but I think he'll get the opportunity. You know, I think both of these guys will have opportunities to score in the red zone, and I think McLaren can still get two touchdowns as well. Um, so yeah, you know, I think they can get up to maybe even 28 points in this game. Still not confident the Dolphins are going to do anything. Um, with the receivers, uh, McLaren starting him, Quinn still keeping him on the bench, Paul Richardson, you can flex him out, Jeremy Sprinkle, yeah, start him at tight end if you need like you know, super desperate. Touchdown dependent tight end play. You know, he's your guy. Jeremy Sprinkle playing up against the Dolphins. Why not? Uh, so, yeah, Quinn's the only guy I'm really not that interested in. Hasn't really been able to do much after the catch. Uh, so, we're not really interested in him in this week. McLaren, Richardson, even Sprinkle, give him to me, uh, but no Trey Quinn. Uh, with the Dolphins, Rosen, nah. Drake, nah. Balaj, nah. Parker, nah. Preston Williams, nah. Oh, Jakeem Grant, oh, he's there, nah. No, no, thank you. Isaiah Ford, bench him. Sorry, they're all bad. Rosen's bad. Dolphins are bad. And I hate them. That's what I wrote. They're all bad. Rosen's bad. Dolphins are bad. And I hate them. It's true. Over under in this game is 42 points. Taking the under. Give me the Redskins, 24, 28. Dolphins, 9. I don't know. Something bad. Not good. Falcons at the Cardinals. Sorry, I just really don't like the Dolphins. I really don't care to speak about them. <laughs> Falcons at the Cardinals. Matt Ryan. Start him, for sure. Cardinals secondary is still really bad. Uh, Falcons coming off that game up against Houston uh, where they just got you know hosed, 52 points scored on them. I think the Falcons will come out a little bit more aggressive this week. Cardinals have allowed 12 touchdowns, still have no interceptions. So a ton of value for Matt Ryan this week. Uh, definitely fire him up with confidence. No issues there. Still had a really great week last week, even though they lost. You know, he threw three touchdowns, uh, only had one interception. So starting him up with confidence, no issues whatsoever. Uh, Devontae Freeman, flexing him out, keeping Ito uh, Smith on the bench. I don't, I'm not sure he gets as many catches as he did last week, which really kept him fantasy relevant. Uh, Arizona is allowing 4.8 yards per carry on the ground. So I like Devontae Freeman's value this week. I think he can find Pater once again. Uh, still value for both of these guys, just not really interested in Ito Smith. He's still got a limited uh, ceiling. And if uh, Devontae Freeman's playing even better, you know, the, the split will, you know, even carry itself away from the 60-40 split that it's already is. Uh, so, yeah, give me uh, Freeman over uh, Edo Smith this week. Uh, starting more of the receivers because I think it's more of a passing-oriented game. So throwing in more of a snoo, a snoo, 
uh, Mohamed Sanu uh, rather than an Ido Smith. So fire him up, fire up Ridley, fire up Julio, fire up Austin Hooper. Think all these guys can have big weeks. Hopefully Julio uh, can you know go off for a big week. He's, he's damn due. Um, would like to see that. Uh, if he does, you know, maybe, you know, Sanu has more of a limited, um, you know, uh, production in, in the offense this week. Not sure, but I still think that Ridley uh, and Hooper will be consistent, even if like, you know, Julio did go off or really if any of these go off, uh, any of these guys go off, I see Ridley and Hooper being uh, the most consistent pieces uh, uh, thus far. Julio has been pretty, pretty inconsistent, not getting in, uh, involved a few weeks. Uh, Sanu, you know, coming in, stealing some touchdowns here and there, or, or just the one week last week. Um, so yeah, I like all these guys this week. Fire them up, no concern. Same thing on the other side, firing up all the Cardinals I can. Kyler Murray starting him. Obviously, the Falcons defense played bad last week, even an improvement uh, from 52 points. You're still looking at you know maybe uh, high 20s, mid 30s. So uh, still like all the opportunity for the Cardinals this week. They're playing at home. Uh, Kyler Murray, fire him up. Uh, Falcons defense giving up the second most fantasy points to the quarterback position. So guy like that. A uh, lot of upside for him this week. David Johnson starting him. He was limited with a back issue this week in practice, but he should be go to suit up. Chase Edmonds, I think you can actually flex him out. They gave him 10 touches last week. If they if the David Johnson back injury is somewhat you know real or a concern going into Sunday, if we're getting those types of uh, indications or those red flags are popping up for David Johnson owners, well, Chase Edmonds, people, you know, j- j- toss him in there. Why not do it? Uh, Falcons have allowed six rushing touchdowns and seventh most yards to the running back position. So there's upside for uh, any running back that's out there for them. Uh, give me David Johnson. I think that he's going to be good to go. I think that he'll still get the the bulk of the of the workload here. Uh, but Dave, uh, Chase Edmonds does have some value uh, with David Johnson just a little bit beat up here. Uh, Fitzgerald starting him. Kirk, if he's good to go, he's a game to, game time decision. If he's good to go, I'll start him. Uh, Demir Bird, same thing. Flex him out. Uh, Keyshawn Johnson, uh, Sheffield, Sheffield. Uh, Andy Isabella, these guys aren't getting it done. I mean, they're, they're getting a plenty of opportunity in this offense, in this air raid offense, where they get to go out there and get all these snaps, and they're not doing anything with it, really. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I think they really need Kirk back, but I'm still confident in starting Fitzgerald. I was hoping for a bigger week out of him last week, but, again, a really good matchup this week, so I'm, I'm really confident in him regardless. Uh, but if Kirk's there, if Bird's there, uh, they're, yeah, I guess they're both game-time decisions because, you know, they've both been limited all week. So uh, look for their calls going into Sunday. Uh, if one plays over the other, I think it, it gives uh, uh, them even more value. So I'm still even firing them up. Uh, no no concern for me, really. Uh, over or under in this game is 51. Uh, 51 and a half. Sorry, 51 and a half. I think it hits the over. Uh, lots of passing on both sides. Uh, I think that the Falcons, you know, coming to play with some pride, going to push the tempo here. And I think the, the Cardinals could actually be playing from behind early on. And that's going to, uh, you know, make them chase points, run up the, the game flow uh, for the passing game. So, uh, I like the over here too, 31-27. Uh, Give me the Falcons win on the road. Uh, next up, we have the 49ers at the Rams. Going to be an interesting game. Uh, looks like uh, Todd Gurley is going to be out. Interesting to see how that's going to play uh, play out for the Rams offense. Uh, jumping in with the 49ers, uh, Jimmy Garoppolo, you're starting him. Uh, Rams defense is you know pretty beat up. Akeem Tlaib look like, looks like he's going to be out as well. Uh, Rams are already allowing t- uh, 240 yards in the air uh, per game. Uh, they're going to get the run support. You know, the, the 49ers have like one of the best offensive lines in, in the league right now, um, only allowing like four sacks on Jimmy Garoppolo. Uh, the running game has been there. They tore up the Cleveland Browns last week for 240 rushing yards. So I'm confident that they're going to balance things out uh, with the run and the pass game uh, in this matchup in, uh, against the Rams. That's going to be a high scoring game in which the running game is going to produce, you know, a good amount of points too. So I'm firing up Rita, firing up Coleman. I think both of those, both of those guys scored a touchdown this week. Like I mentioned, the offensive line has been really good. They looked really good last week with uh, Tevin Coleman coming back. Yeah, Mostert and Wilson are still there, but I don't, I'm not sure that they really hold any value right now with Breida and Coleman really carrying the team. You know, Breida has looked really, really good the past couple of weeks, so you got to like him. And Coleman uh, coming back looked really strong, so I like his value this week. I think that uh, Breida does a bunch of rushing, give, give him anywhere from uh, 75 to 100 yards rushing and give Coleman anywhere from – you know, 70 to 90 all-purpose yards in the passing and the rushing game. So I think both of these guys are going to be included a lot. I like Breida a little bit more just because he's been consistent and he's been there, and I still want to see what Coleman can do. Uh, but I think both of them are healthy starts this week. Uh, both are going to be good to go for you uh, and be very fantasy relevant. Uh, Pettis, uh, Goodwin, Debo, Kittle, uh, starting all of them except Dante Pettis. Sorry, Dante Pettis, not doing enough still. 
I like Goodwin this week. I like Samuel this week. I like Kittle this week. I think the opportunity is going to be there from the balance of rushing attack. I think these guys are going to be able to get some deep shots downfield. Uh, I think got, uh, Goodwin will be uh, back in uh, the end zone this week, uh, Get uh, dial up a big uh, touchdown for him. And Debo Samuel getting used in that gadgetry type of role, getting the reverses, getting the sweeps, um, you know, getting the stuff underneath the screens. I like his value. And then, of course, Kittle. I'm, so I'm firing up Kittle for sure. Uh, I think they just rested him uh, the, the last day of practice, came up with a groin injury uh, late in the week on the, on the injury report, but not really concerned about that. Uh, just did a little bit more last week, so I think that uh, he's going to be good to go. But follow his status still on his Sunday, make sure that he's healthy, make sure that he's good to go. But he's still a solid start for me. Uh, if he is out, then whew, good, Goodwin and Samuel, I think, are in line for a big day uh, because I still think that the, the rushing attack is going to draw a lot of attention with Brita and Coleman, and they're really going to be able to find opportunities with the with the receivers uh, in this game up against the Rams. So, yeah, fire fire up the, all those guys minus Dante Pettis. Uh, if Kittle's out, you know, Samuel, Goodwin, like I said, uh, big weeks for those guys. Uh, with the Rams, I got Goff in here as kind of a riskier start, but I think you can fire him up. I think he's going to throw for a lot of yards. I just think that he could also throw an interception or two. Uh, Gurley is likely to be out, so that should push his game flow. He should be passing a lot more, but the 49ers defense has been really good. They're going to bring a lot of pressure up on him up front, and we've seen him make mistakes at the line of scrimmage while, you know, when guys are just literally screaming through uh, his offensive line. Uh, I think it was up against the Buccaneers. Uh, there was a defensive lineman for the Bucs that just literally drove right through the offensive line, and Goff literally just, just immediately out of his hand out of his hand and into the defender's hand. He was throwing it, he was making a pass, but it was literally like, catch, oh hell, he's right here, pass, interception. It was crazy. I could I could see some some bonehead plays like that this week, just because the 49ers are a really aggressive defense. Uh, they have really good uh, uh, secondary players. They still have Richard Sherman back there. They're really strong up front. They have Bosa bringing a ton of pressure right now. That guy looks like a monster um, out of Monsters, Inc. Literally put like some purple fur on him. You know, seriously, look at him. Uh, Gurley going to be on the bench this week. Obviously, you know, he's trending like he's going to be out. Even if he plays, I think he's going to, it would be at a super limited capacity. You wouldn't want him in your lineup. Uh, Malcolm Brown, you're firing him up. Here it is. This is a week. If you've been uh, stashing him, you're firing him up. Uh, I think could catch some passes. Henderson, I'm not really sure if he's going to get included at all. Darrell Henderson, uh, he would be the guy that you would assume would be like the pass catching uh, uh, back, but not really sure what's going to happen. He's been, you know, just not included at all. You know, you'd think for all the talk that they had about him uh, in the preseason that he'd get some more usage, but no, nothing. So I'm not really confident to start him. I think you can absolutely start Brown. Well, absolutely, you're starting Brown. He's filling up for Gurley. But Henderson, I'm keeping him on the bench for now. Fire up Brown with confidence. Should have a good week. Uh, with uh, the receivers, firing up everybody. Woods, Cup, Cooks, Everett. You know, Cooks has been limited, but still expected to play. I think that he, he should have a uh, you know, decent, you know, deep threat ability this week. Again, Gurley out. I think all these guys' uh, ceilings are you know, up. Uh, Cup, been a lock every week. You're absolutely starting him. Woods should have a better week, again, with Gurley out, uh, having some more opportunity, uh, but has been playing behind the likes of you know, Cup and even Everett last week, who you're, I think you're plugging in for sure, has put a couple of good weeks together. I think that he could find you know, four to six catches and a touchdown. Uh, in the over-under, I, I still got to take the over here. I think that even Gurley being out even lends more to the over because I think the Rams are going to have to pass a lot more uh, than they than they expected. Could be a game where Goff is getting into like the 60, 70 passing attempts again. You know, good amount of volume that, volume there for him again, but I still do think that he makes some mistakes. Uh, give me the over in this game, uh, 50 and a half points, like the over. I think it's a 31-28 win coin flip, like either either side here. Uh, whoever has the ball last gets a field goal, you know, 31-28, either direction. You know, uh, Rams win, uh, 49ers win, I'm not sure. Really don't, coin flip. But I like a lot of points, 38-21 total. Uh, next up, Cowboys at the Jets. We have uh, Dak starting him. Jets not allowing a ton of passing yards, but I do think that you can find two touchdowns this week. A little bit more of a riskier start because I do think that they're going to be expecting a lot more from Zeke. But I think they're also going to be passing a good amount to Zeke. So I think that's, that, that still holds Dak, uh, Dak's value up. Uh, Zeke, obviously, you're starting him. They don't allow a ton of yards to the running back position, but they have allowed uh, five rushing touchdowns in five games. So I like the value for him there. And I do like him to uh, receive a, a pass get, or a receiving touchdown. Sorry, I like him to uh, catch a receiving touchdown. No Pollard starts this week, uh, not firing him up. Uh, I think Zeke is going to be a, a little bit over the 100-yard all-purpose mark. Uh, like 110, 115 yards. 
uh, firing up the receivers and Michael Gallup and Cooper. Uh, not firing up anybody else, though. I do think that the passing game is going to be limited. I think the volume for Witten, Cobb, and maybe even Deb Smith behind Cooper and Gallup is going to be in like in the one to three catch range. And uh, Cooper and Gallup are just going to get the majority of things. And if there's going to be a touchdown from this group, I think it's going to be Gallup or Cooper. Uh, Gallup is back in the mix, so I think he's really going to keep things rolling for this offense. Uh, really keeps uh, the options open for for Cooper and even these other guys. Um, you know, Cooper's still in play for a good game, I think. Just see his opportunities being a little bit more limited, drawing strong uh, some stronger coverage uh, over Co uh, Gallup. Sorry, Cobb, Deb Smith, Deb Smith, not in play for me. Witten could still roll out, sneak for a touchdown, but I'm not banking on it this week. I'm not, I'm not putting my chips into that pot. Uh, next up with the Jets, uh, Sam Darnold, still benching him. Uh, have to see him back a week. You know, M Mono's a bitch. We, you know, we, we, we got to see if he's a real deal still. Real deal still. Uh, if he's going to play this whole game out, you know, make sure that he's good to go. Make sure that he's really fully healthy because they may still be rushing him back. I mean, the, the product on the field is really, really bad with any other quarterback that they have. So, uh, not firing him up this week, still starting uh, Le'Veon Bell. I think that he can have a stronger week with Darnold back, but that still doesn't mean I'm going to start Darnold. You know, I think that he could help out getting him a, a pass catching touchdown, but I'm not banking on uh, Darnold having a big game. I like Lev Bell a little bit more. think that he can get seven to nine targets this week. Darnold upgrades everybody else, but like I said, not, not confident in, uh, enough in him to get him in my lineup. Crowder, Anderson, Demarius, uh, Anderson, Demarius, a little bit riskier starts. I think Crowder is uh, is a flex play. I think he's a strong flex play. But Anderson, Demarius, riskier starts. But you know, if you, if you need them, you can get them in your lineup. They're going to be touchdown dependent guys, looking somewhere in the four to six catch range. Crowder still has that upside. You know, we saw him get like fourteen uh, catches one game. So I, I think that he has the most upside with Darnold being back. Anderson, Demarius, riskier starts. Tread lightly. You might have better options. Uh, but the matchup is, is going to be there just because I think that uh, Lev Bell is going to be drawing a lot of coverage. Crowder is going to get some co uh, some coverage on him. So we'll see what happens. I think it's going to get mixed around. None of these receivers go off a really big volume. Crowder, again, has the opportunity, but not really seeing it. The Cowboys defense has been really strong. He's the guy that I'm most confident in starting. Anderson, Demarius, yeah, still risky. Over-under in this game is 44 and a half. I'm taking the under. I think the Jets D slows, uh, slows down the Cowboys. Uh, but Cowboys still get it done, 24-17. Uh, uh, Cowboys went on the road there. Uh, next up, we have the Titans at the Broncos. Uh, Marcus Mariota, keeping him on the bench. Uh, Broncos, uh, fifth least yards allowed to quarterbacks. Mariota, uh, Lex, just upside in the road for me. Slower, grind, grinded out type of game. Not interested in him. I think you can do better. Uh, Derrick Henry, absolutely start him. Uh, Broncos are allowing 4.7 yards per carry, 11th most yards on the ground. So. Derrick Henry, hoping that he's inclined for a big day on Sunday. Uh, most upside for the Tennessee offense, in my opinion. Uh, A.J. Brown still has some upside. I, I, I'd flex him out, uh, but not starting Corey Davis. Delaney Walker, I think you can start. He was uh, limited at practice this week. He's back. He's good to go. And I'm benching uh, uh, Adam Humphreys. Humphreys, Davis, just not been getting it done. A.J. Brown showing that he can uh, score on a limited uh, volume. So I like his upside this week up against the Broncos. Uh, but Derrick Henry, I think, is the one you got to be most excited about uh, starting this week up against the Broncos. Uh, with the with the Broncos, we got Flacco, still not starting him. Not enough to upside for me. Still very inconsistent, mistake oriented. Tennessee defense is going to get some sacks on them. They have the fourth most in the league, so they're going to be bringing a lot of pressure. So I like Lindsey a little bit more, being able to alleviate some of that pressure on Fla uh, Flacco. You know, possibly catching some balls out of the backfield. You know, getting a, a good amount of volume. Freeman, I'm going to bench this week. Lindsay has just been more of the, the hotter hand more consistently. I think that that's the direction that they really want to go. Uh, so I'm going to bench Freeman this week. I like Lindsay more. Uh, I think that they uh, can get two touchdowns on the ground. Freeman may be able to get a touchdown. He just may not be able to get any yardage, you know, but I don't want to bet on that this week. Uh, but I could see uh, Lindsay getting a couple of touchdowns on the ground this week. Um, if the passing game just isn't there for uh, the, the Broncos, if, if the, 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 the pass rushing game is really taking him out of, uh, uh, out of the game plan. Uh, Sanders and Sutton, I'll, I'm okay starting them. Sanders, there's just still upside there. He's still re really talented. Obviously, he had a, a bad week last week, but I think his, his upside is still there just based on his talent. And Sutton has just really gotten things rolling with Flacco. I don't think that Sutton's honestly that great of a receiver, but he's gotten uh, really comfortable with Flacco, and that's and that's awesome. Uh, he's made some plays here and there, but 
to me, he's he's not uh, he's not elite. You know, he, he's just not elite. Uh, I know that they've been clearing out space for him. You know, they trade Demarius Thomas to get him more usage. You know, Demarius Thomas been there forever. That was that was a big deal. So they really like him. For me, I'm just not as high on him as a receiver. I like a lot of other guys in the league over him. Um, but I, you can start him this week. I don't know where I'm going with that. Uh, get him, fire him up in your lineup this week. Him and Flacco have gotten really comfortable with each other. Uh, and Flacco is just giving him consistent value every week. You know, he's looking his way. Uh, over under, oh, no offense, not starting him. Sorry, just not enough uh, upside. I think Flacco still is going to be pressured. I only want uh, Sanders and Sutton uh, for the pass catchers this week. Uh, over under 40 and a half points. I like the under in this game. I think the defenses are the offenses this week. I think uh, Derrick Henry and Philip Lindsay are the guys uh, that are going to flourish in this matchup uh, fantasy wise. Uh, and then the receivers might jump in, you know, the, the AJ Brown, you know, Sutton, maybe even Sanders gets a touchdown this week. I'm not sure, but I see more of those guys producing in like the volume receiving uh, uh, facet of the game, you know, just catching a lot of balls, maybe not closing in the, in the red zone or uh, getting a touchdown. So uh, those are the guys that fire up there. Okay, next up we have the Steelers at the Chargers. Things are not looking good for the Steelers. Uh, they have uh, Darnell Hodges starting this week at quarterback. Not starting him. Don't do that. Uh, not enough uh, there for me. I uh, haven't seen enough. Uh, looked okay in the limited work. I think it was like six for eight. Six for eight passing, 68 yards, something like that. Not Just not confident whatsoever. Uh, I like the run game more. Give me, uh, give me Connor uh, this week. Uh, I think he'll get leaned on. The Chargers are allowing four and a half yards per carry, so... I think that he'll be involved quite a bit. Hodges, again, just not enough there for me. Uh, I think he'll be doing a lot of passing at the line of scrimmage, similar to what Rudolph was doing. Um, so I think that does provide some value for Juju and Deontay Johnson, but I can't fire up anybody else. Uh, Switzer, Vanette, Vance is still out. Uh, just not enough value there. James Washington is out, and that's really the only reason I'm firing up uh, Deontay Johnson is just because uh, he should get you know some more uh, some more looks. I mean, he's been really good regardless, but... Uh, with James Washington completely out of the picture, I feel you know co really confident starting him. So Juju, Deontay Johnson, Connor, fire up these guys. Uh, no Hodges for me. Just get whatever you can get from these guys. You know if you need them. Uh, Juju still has a ceiling. You know he can still find Pater. You know if Hodges can get in close, or you know really if he can get get him the ball anywhere and just get him into open space. You know Juju can create opportunity. So man. Risky start, I think, still this week, Juju and Deontay Johnson. Still risky starts with this quarterback. But, man, if, if you drafted Juju early and, and, and you're ready to die on that hill like I am for him, you got to fire him up. Man, really sucks that Steelers offense this year. All right, uh, moving on to the Chargers. Rivers, starting him. Uh, defense, you know, hasn't been great for uh, the, the Steelers still. I do expect there are going to be a lot of pressure on, on Rivers. Not really a risky start because, you know, you bring all that pressure on Rivers. You know, he can get the ball out to Eckler, no problem. So I, I really don't see him being in danger this week. Uh, Rivers is really, really good about getting the ball out under pressure, getting the ball out uh, at the last second before taking a hit. So I think that he's going to be uh, their kind of kryptonite to that defensive line uh, this week. I think they're going to have a hard time with him. I expect a lot of quick passes either out to Eckler or Allen. I think that Allen will be able to carve up this secondary quite a bit. So, yeah, definitely fire up uh, Rivers uh, this week. Uh, Pittsburgh are, is allowing about 230 passing yards per week. So some upside there. See him hitting over 250 passing yards, a couple of touchdowns for sure. Starting Eckler, starting Melvin Gordon. Melvin Gordon, again, going to be used as kind of a, like a shield uh, to the, the pass rush uh, of the Steelers. I think that he'll get a good amount of volume or somewhere around like 13 to 15 carries this week, maybe even catch a couple of passes away from Eckler's workload. But I do think that Eckler is still going to be used a lot. He's done a ton for their offense so far this year to keep them in the hunt for their division. So I uh, have to like him, uh, have to like Gordon just based off of his value and his talent. So uh, you got to fire up both of them this week. Absolutely. For the receivers, uh, starting Allen, starting Williams, Williams healthy, uh, looked good last week. So you can feel comfortable starting him again. Uh, not starting Benjamin or the tight ends. I think it's going to be a lot of Eckler and Gordon sprinkling in with Allen and Williams when they can. And I think uh, Allen can find Pater this week. Not sure Williams does. I think Williams does or, or will create mismatches up against the secondary. Uh, kind of similar. I was talking about DK Metcalf up against the Browns. I think Mike Williams could make some uh, mismatches up against the secondary. Maybe even find Pater this week. Okay, over under for uh, the Chargers and the Steelers. You got 41 and a half. Uh, taking the under. Like the Chargers to score like 24 points, uh, 21 points, somewhere in there. Uh, Pittsburgh, somewhere like 10 to 13, maybe even nine. I'm not sure. Just not really sure what we're going to get out of Hodges. 
Don't like them to score a lot of points this week. So I think it's going to be a little bit of a lower scoring game. Uh, give me like a 24-13 victory for the Chargers. Uh, last up, Monday Night Football, we have the Lions at the Packers. Stafford, a riskier start, I think. Uh, Packers defense has been solid. More interceptions than touchdowns right now. I still like Stafford to throw, you know, a little bit more than usual in this game just because I think he'll be throwing a lot in the second half. Um, still think he can throw an interception or two, though, so I think he's a riskier start. I like on Johnson more. I like the rushing game for both sides a lot more. I think it's going to be a lot of rushing and then sprinkling, sprinkling in the pass, really, for both sides here. Uh, you'll have Devontae Adams out for the Packers. So on Johnson, uh, must start. Packers are allowing the eighth most rush yards, six rushing touchdowns through five games. A lot of value there for him. Uh, getting fed before the bye, you know, 22, I think, and then 27 carries or 22 and 25. So getting a lot of carries there, uh, nearly 50 carries in the last two games. Looking for him to just, you know, pick up where he left off. Give me uh, 22 carries, 115, 120 rushing yards, two rushing touchdowns this week for him. Galladay, uh, Marvin Jones, a little bit of riskier starts, like I said, with the, with the, the passing attack. I do think they'll get sprinkling in enough where they're going to have value this week. I think both of them can hit 75 yards plus, and one of them gets a touchdown. So I think they're bo uh, both fantasy relevant this week. Uh, Kenny Galladay and Marvin Jones, benching Amendola, benching Marvin Hall, bar uh, benching Hawkinson. Hawkinson, I think, is going to play, but he's been limited. Uh, banged up, was in concussion protocol. So not sure what type of workload he gets this week. Uh, so I'm going to keep him on the bench uh, just one more week before getting him back into the lineup. Packers are like middle of the road up against the pass, so there is some value here for Galladay and Jones, I think. Uh, they're the only ones that I really feel confident starting. Again, I think it's going to be a lot of running from both sides, sprinkling in the pass. Uh, next up with the Packers, we have Rodgers. Again, a kind of a riskier start, I think. Monday Night Football, I think they're going to try to ground out, uh, grind out the run on both sides. Aaron Jones is there, had a great week last week. You have Jamal Williams coming back, going to get him in, back involved in the game, uh, in the game plan. Uh, and the Lions are allowing 4.8 yards per carry. I think there's value against them uh, against them in the run. Five rushing touchdowns allowed so far this season in five games. So, yeah, I think you got to start both of these guys, Aaron Jones and Jamal Williams, in your flex spot if he's good to go. Uh, I believe he's going to be a game-time decision, but I think he's going to be back and he's going to be healthy. And Lafleur wants to uh, lean on the run game. So I think that he uh, is going to have a role again this week. Uh, again, a lot of rushing this week. Uh, between uh, both both sides. Even if uh, Williams is out, I think Aaron Jones will uh, get a, a ton of work. So uh, like both of these running backs, if you can get them in there, uh, if Williams is back. Uh, MVS, Allison, Jimmy Graham, starting all of them. Uh, not sure what, the, what type of volume they're going to get, though. Uh, Devontae Adams uh, looks like he's going to be out. He's taking the time to get healthy and get right. Understand it. I get it. Uh, but what, what's left over here, MVS, Allison, Graham. I like Allison the most again this week. I think that he, again, coming out of the slot, provides the most upside, playing in the middle of the field, having a little bit more opportunity there. Uh, Lions defense has been you know, you know, know, pretty decent. I, I think Graham could uh, get involved as well, maybe find the end zone. Just I think Aaron or, uh, Aaron Rodgers is a riskier start. I think he could only throw one to two touchdowns and still have you know, maybe even one to two interceptions if they try to lean on the pass. I think the run attack is the way to go for both sides here, especially in the first half. Uh, definitely taking the first half under in this game, but I think that the the second half, um, you know, they could get things rolling. I still think the game total, 46 points, will take the under. Uh, give me a 24-20 20, 20, uh, Packers victory. I think that, like, again, running both sides, going to be used a lot, uh, not going to be a ton of passing. Uh, both sides are just going to be concentrated on that on Monday Night Football, slower, grinded out type of game. Uh, the receivers starting them, but I think there are some better options out there. I think you can find some better options than MVS and Allison and, and Graham this week. Graham kind of on the higher end of the, the tight end list, you know, based on the options that are out there. But I do th still think that there's some some better options. Uh, Graham is a high end uh, touchdown dependent uh, 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 guy or tight end this week. Uh, but I'm, I'm not sure that he's going to have the volume, may only get three to four catches. So feel confident starting most of these guys except Rodgers. Same thing really with the other side with the Lions. I feel confident starting all the position players, just not the quarterback. So we'll see what we get out of that Monday night game. I hope it's at least entertaining. It's going to keep me up super effing late. So I hope it's at least a, a good game. Uh, I'd like it to hit the over and you know wow me with all the points, but I think it's going to be under this total 46 points. So give me the Packers there, 24-20. Uh, uh, that's it. That's the, the week six preview. Wrapped it up here. Going to take it to the hizzy this week. Hope you guys uh, do too. Uh, get at me if you have any questions. Uh, still looking to get any uh, any trades done. 
Uh, if you need to add some guys any last minute, you know, last hour, 13th hour, uh, you know, especially uh, get at me, uh, you know, tonight. Uh, if you're thinking uh, about something for that early game, you know, for that Bucks, uh, uh, Bucks Carolina game starting at 930 Eastern, 830 Central time, I'm uh, going to have to get up even earlier this week for that. It's going to be a long, long day for me uh, taking Sunday night football deep into the night. So looking forward to it, though. That's why I do it. I uh, uh, love love the game that is uh, following the, 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 the sport uh, that we all love. Uh, so yeah, good to go for week six, guys. Let's keep it rolling. Take it to the hizzy. Have a good one. I'll see you next time. Thanks for stopping back. Uh, like, share, and subscribe. I'll see you next time. Be good.